I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. This is going to be a nightmare. Did I do it? No. Grotesque is the word that I was thinking at the time. Scarf. In that moment, I knew that this wasn't going to be good news. Hi, I'm Erin Deering and you're listening to The Work. Hello everyone. This week's episode of The Work is a little bit different. We filmed this one at my house. Um, if you know anything about my story, and if you don't know, I'll give you a quick little update. I had a melanoma removed from my face, which re resulted in quite a large surgery, quite a large chunk of my cheek being taken out. This episode talks about that at length, goes into quite a lot of detail from it. It's a lot more of a raw, intimate episode. And let's get into it. I hope you really, really love it. This one's super, there's, a, there's been some really big learnings here, so I really hope you love it. Two weeks before my wedding, I got a facial. Love a facial, very aesthetically driven, especially weeks out from the wedding. And the clinician who was performing my facial asked me about a little sunspot, a little pigment mark on my face. She asked me if I'd had it checked before, to which I hadn't. To which her reply was, I think you should probably get that one checked out before I go and laser it off. Now, this was nothing alarmist at the time. I remember when she said this, it was more coming from an angle of, go and get it checked because I'll laser it off for you, but I need to know first that it's okay to do so. But it was in that very moment that I thought and realized that this little spot that I'd had on my face for a good year, I'd never even thought to get it checked. It was a tiny little pigment mark. It was something that I thought was perhaps left over from one of my children. Getting pigment after a baby is quite a common thing. So I thought it was that. Went and made an appointment that very, very same day, made an appointment with my dermatologist to go and have it looked at. Went a few days later. Immediately when my dermatologist saw the spot, she recommended we do a biopsy on it straight away, which we did. She told me that it would be about one to two weeks before the pathology reports came back. So I went on my little merry little way. I had a little bandit on my face, went about my day. As it was the next day at about 10 30 in the morning i got a phone call now i missed this call but i got a phone call from a mobile number and when i heard the voicemail it was my dermatologist and she asked me if i could call her back on her personal mobile number in that moment i knew that this wasn't going to be good news I kind of made a bit of a joke about it. I had a few people at the house at the time and I said, oh no, maybe it's fine, like it's fine. It's probably just, she wants to clear the air. You know, I'm about to get married and probably just wants to keep it all, keep it all light and just let me know that it was all good. So I called her back and wasn't surprised to hear that it was actually a melanoma on my face, a malignant melanoma. Now we caught it early, it was a level one, but it was still a melanoma and it was on my face and it needed to come out ASAP. It, it's been a really interesting, experience for me. I went into this very pragmatically when I found out I had a melanoma. I knew I had to get it taken out, obviously. I knew it was on my face. I went and saw the surgeon. I knew it was going to be cut sort of, you know, a bit bigger than, or a lot bigger than the, you know, little melanoma dot itself. But I still wasn't expecting what I saw. Even after the surgery, I had a big bandage on my face. The bandage was quite raised and I, assumed that my surgeon had put a lot of padding down there just to protect the skin and, and not, you know, not be anything that kind of got knocked. And I did not, I don't know, I thought there was padding there. And then when he took the, when the surgeon, the four days later took the bandage off, I realized that was actually in my skin that the padding was because I didn't know that the stitches were on the inside. These are all things that were complete shocks to me because I went into this so quickly to get this melanoma out. And I had this big raised scar on my face and I remember when he took the bandage off and he gave me the mirror to hold it up and I don't know what I was expecting to see at all but when I held the mirror up and I looked at my face and I had this grotesque is the word that I would just that I was thinking at the time scar from literally underneath my eye all the way down to my jaw covering my entire cheek and I looked in the mirror and my surgeon said as all good surgeons do it looks great it looks great because of course it looked great to him he'd done an incredible job and he has he's done the most incredible job of getting this one beautiful thin line but for me I'm looking at my face and all I thought was I have to cancel everything coming up you know I've got a book launch coming up. I'm launching my new business. I have a million things talking to camera coming up. I have, I'm going to be out there. And all I said, I just thought I have to cancel everything. And then I thought, well, I can't do that. And my mind started processing these things really quickly. I can't cancel everything. And so I said to the doctor, what bandage am I able to put on it? Thinking, well, at the very least, I'll get a skin colored bandage. It won't look great, but it'll, it'll cover this absolutely revolting looking bumpy red 
thing on my face. And he said, oh no, Aaron, we don't cover, we don't cover these scars. We let them breathe because they heal quicker. So not only did I have this scar, but I couldn't even cover it. So it was literally exposure like I'd never had before. So I initially had a bit of a, uh, I'm not gonna say meltdown, but a little bit of a crisis of confidence. Acted pretty cool in the, in the clinic and you know, got my instructions on what to do afterwards and applying betadine every day. And that was kind of about it. No other aftercare really needed. It's meant to just heal nicely on its own. I walked to the car, feeling very vulnerable, very exposed, sat in the car, took a photo, took a photo of it, sent it to my husband, sent it to Zach. And he called me and I said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. This is going to be a nightmare. And I could feel myself unravel life. You can feel in those moments when it rises and rises and rises. And I, I, I said to him, I can't, I look terrible. He said, oh darling, you look, you look fine. It's, it's fine, it's not a problem. It's just on the outside, it's not who you are. And I said, I said to him in this moment, I said, but darling, everyone likes me because I'm pretty. That's why they follow me. That's why people are interested in me because I look good, which I'm so mortified to even repeat because it sounds so ridiculous because I know that that's not the truth. I also know that that sounds completely vain and so silly and so illogical. And of course, in that moment, he scoffed and said, no one likes you because of that. No one likes you because of, who, of how you look. They like you or because of who you are. You like you because of who you are. I had that moment and got over it, drove home, started to process what was going on, you know, went home, looked at myself in the mirror, kind of process, worked through a bit how I'm going to manage this, you know. I asked my doctor if I was able, my surgeon, if I was able to put a little bit of tape on for an hour or two here or there. He said, if you have to, you can go buy skin colored tape and you can put that on. So I was thinking, that's what I'm going to do. If I have a meeting, if I have if I go online, if I talk to anyone, and I thought, God, I just don't know if I have the energy to be like, not only is it time consuming, just put the tape on, take the tape off, and when do I do it, and for what reason, and for what? I'm like, I'm all about limiting, you know, things in that way, things that are complicated. Let's simplify things. So I thought, okay, that's not going to work. It's also inconsistent because there's going to be times that I'm not going to have it, and then when am I going to have it? What am I going to pick a tape up moment versus not? So I kind of abandoned that idea completely. I went and I got I got my boy wave that I got, which is really a nice aesthetic thing. This is the thing, right? I love aesthetic things. For me, aesthetic things make me feel good as well as looking good, and that's just a big part of who I am. I, I, I know if I look good, I feel good. I put a lot of importance on that in the moment of thinking, no, but if I don't look good, scar, I'm not going to feel good. If I don't feel good, I can't do what I need to do in the world. You know, I can't, I, I can't live my passion and, and, and live with purpose because I'm not going to look good. So I got my hair done. It was more the fact that I went out with this scar early on. You know, I pretty much went straight to that appointment and I had my hair up and I sat down and I was just kind of like, you know, had my head down a little bit and just talking and my limited, my, my range of movement also at the time was extremely limited and I wasn't really able to talk with full motion as well. So I felt, I felt just like I looked and sounded grotesque, but I just was like, I just have to go and do what I need to do, continue with my day. I'm not going to hide away, not feeling super comfortable with it. And then as the day went on, I started to feel a little bit different in my body and a little bit, I don't know, accepting of, of, of myself. And Zach and I had a date that night. We had a dinner date. I decided I still wanted to go, obviously. For me, it wasn't even like a decision not to go. By then I'd already thought, okay, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go out into the world with this and it's gonna be awful, but I'm gonna do it because I can do hard things. But what I wasn't expecting, and this happened pretty much from this night onwards and I'm still feeling it today, was this incredibly empowering, liberating feeling. So I left and went to this dinner and I walked into this restaurant, a very well-known restaurant in Melbourne a very nice vibey, sceny restaurant. You know, I still had my normal nice outfit on. I still dressed up, but I didn't have any makeup on because I could. I can't really wear makeup. I can wear makeup on this side of my face only. Um, but I didn't wear any makeup that night. I was feeling just very sensitive, a bit f vulnerable, a bit fragile. So I didn't put anything on. I didn't really want to look in the mirror too much and see. But I had to walk into this dinner and I had to walk in with this exposure and this full vulnerability and this face. And... I walked in and I walked to my table and I sat down and I felt really good. I felt really light. I felt really free. I, I didn't really feel vulnerable by this point. I, started, I felt really confident. I felt amazing. I felt beautiful, but not in, a, in, a, in an aesthetic way. I felt 
beautiful. I felt like I was myself. And I, this feeling kind of continued from that point onwards, this feeling of empowerment, this feeling of feeling really, really free, really liberated, really good. And so what I came to realize, you know, and what I've come to realize is that this scar has allowed me to be myself and in a way of having no control really over how I presented myself to the world other than to be myself. That's the only way I have been able to be out in the world is to be me because I couldn't hide this. I couldn't hide it with makeup. I couldn't hide it with a bandage. I couldn't hide anything about myself. So I had to just be myself. And that was the most liberating feeling. And I asked someone that I see about this, I asked one of my Chinese, I see a lot of people, I have a big network, a big support crew. And I asked my Chinese medicine doctor, Ryan, the, the week afterwards, I sat down with him and I said, I walked in, he said, how are you feeling? And I said, I feel bloody great. I feel really, really good. And I said, and I, it's just, it's just not what I expected, you know. And and a lot of and a lot of the feelings around it were, do I feel good because I feel can, um, cancer free? Do I feel good because I got on top of this? And to be honest, it's, it's yeah, of course, of course. But that's not where this really guttural, like feeling comes from. And Ryan put it really, really well to me in this moment. He said, when you walked into that restaurant, you usually carry the weight, the expectation that you put on yourself to look a certain way, to then be accepted a certain way, to be looked at a certain way, to be judged a certain way. You know, you value this aesthetics because they're part of you. You put your aesthetics and who you really are together on this same playing field. But what happened that night is that you didn't carry that weight. You literally cut that weight of expectation on how you look off. And so you felt free because you were just being who you are. And that simplistic explanation really summed up so well how I feel and how I felt and yeah I still love aesthetics and yes I love to look good but and I always felt like I had a great handle on that too you know this is the thing about about personal development and about understanding who you are is that you're always learning I felt like I had such a good handle on this balance of who I really am versus who I present to be and what this scar has shown me is that it probably actually wasn't as imbalanced as I thought it was. And that the emphasis that I had on this person aesthetically <clears throat> was probably sometimes over, over compensating for who I really was. And so I've gone back in balance with this and it's been really, really beautiful. And it's been incredible to observe, incredible to live. And I'm just actually unbelievably grateful for the scar to have been able to teach me this. And, you know, I'm still going to dress up and, and still be aesthetically me, but with this newfound understanding that it actually really isn't, the power in who I am isn't really in how I look and how I present, it's actually in who I am. And that's one of the most beautiful things I think I've ever learned in my entire life. So I'm very grateful to not only you guys for being here for me in a way that I've never felt before, so thank you, but I'm so grateful to this scar for teaching me something that I needed to know and what a blessing. <laughs> it's crazy, but I feel so, so grateful for this guy. My diagnosis has been great. The only follow-up that I need to do is regular skin checks. Now I have to see and get skin checks every six months now. I had a melanoma as well at the age of 21. I had it on my leg just here. I have a cute little, a cute little scar to show for it. And I had that cut out when I was 21. And back then I was told to get skin checks every year. Did I do it? No. If I'd done it, would this have gotten onto my face? No. So the real important thing here that I, that I have to share with you guys is how important and how crucial regular skin checks are. Now, when I had this taken out and I had this scar and I've spoken about it since, people ask me, oh, but you haven't really been in the sun that much lately. And you know, I know that you wear a hat and you wear sunscreen and you do this and you do that. And oh, you know, you were in the sun a lot when you were younger, all of this stuff. Now, what I really want to say to everybody, it doesn't matter if you're in the sun or not. My, my surgeon told me I might have a genetic predisposition to melanoma. It doesn't even really matter if you're in the sun for some people at all. Only consistent preventative thing you can do for malignant melanomas is to get your 
skin checked. We have a large body, all of us. We have a lot of skin. Melanomas can look, this first melanoma looked really ugly. It was a really obvious melanoma. It was black, it was raised, it changed its shape. It was so obvious that it was a melanoma. This scar on my face was tiny. It was so light. It was so much just a sunspot. I didn't even think, my, on my face, it didn't even bother me until someone else actually said to me, go and get that checked. The only way that we can ensure that this large area on our body is going to not have melanomas on it is if we get our skin checked. If you get your skin checked every six months or every year for most people, you will be able to catch melanoma before it becomes deadly because melanomas are incredibly deadly. If they spread to your lymph nodes, to your glands, it's awful, it's horrific. It's hard to find words because if I let this go for another six months, I don't even know what could have happened and that is a terrifying thought and an annoying thought for me in a way because if I had done what I was meant to do from the age of 21 on, Onwards, I wouldn't have ever had to deal with this. So everybody living in Australia, especially because we do know that UV has an impact in our lives, whether you're anti-sunscreen, pro-sunscreen, pro-sun, anti-sun, whatever it is, we know the sun's good for us. We know it's bad for us. We know that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All we have to do is get regular skin checks to ensure that early prevention happens, to ensure that we don't get sick and we don't have our lives cut short. So one amazing thing that happened not long after I had my melanoma cut out was that Scott Mags from Skin Check Champions reached out to me and what they do is the most incredible service, most incredible offering. They encourage and educate and they travel around and they teach, they save lives and they teach people how important important it is to get your skin checked. I am so proud and honored to be part of this charity and to be someone that can raise awareness and use my voice for what happened to me to ensure that it doesn't happen to anybody else because it doesn't have to. I didn't have to go through this and I shouldn't have gone through this if I had just place enough importance on the fact that I needed to get my skin checked. So I'm here to ensure that all of you guys go and get your skin checked. And with the help of Skin Check Champions, we're gonna make sure that no one, no one has to go through what I went through and what so many others have to go through. Thanks so much for tuning in on this one, guys. This was such an important episode for me to film and get out there. I hope you really, really loved it. Don't forget to get your skin checked. I'm actually getting my skin checked tomorrow in real time again. So this is your reminder, please go and do it. I'll talk to you soon guys, bye.